Good day class! Welcome to our virtual physical education subject. I am Mr. Jarek Jewen El Laugo, your physical education teacher. Now let us proceed to our physical education topic for today. Our topic for today is all about swimming. The definition of swimming, the history of swimming, the benefits of swimming, the swimwear used in swimming, the facilities, equipment, and accessories used in swimming. Let's start with the question, where do you go swimming? In beach or in swimming pool? So you can have your swimming in beach, in swimming pool, or in any bodies of water as long as you secure your safety during your swimming activities. So here in our province, we are surrounded by many bodies of water because we are island province so you can have your swimming in seas in beach in rivers and in lakes so also we have many swimming pool resorts here in our province especially now that we have our first ever um, olympic size swimming pool located in santa cruz so dun ginaganap yung mga swimming competitions na meron tayo sa ating province so what is swimming Swimming is an individual or team sport that involves using arms and legs to move the body through water. So in international swimming competition, the swimmer that makes the biggest wave is the faster and makes a long trunk and larger waves. So Europeans have a 3% larger than the West African body. So and this gives them 1.5% more speed advantage in the pool. So sabi dito kung mas patangkad ka, mas malaking katawan mo, so you have your advantage in swimming competitions. So, pag hindi ka matangkad, alam mo na. Next, swimming is a competitive sport and is considered good all-around exercise for people of all ages and fitness levels. It works all the major muscle groups and is easy on the joints. It also helps build cardiovascular strength. So, swimming is a form of exercise, good for our health and fitness for any age group because all the muscles are active during swimming activities. So swimming strokes or ways of moving through the water include freestyle, backstroke, butterfly, and breaststroke. So these swimming strokes are the competitive strokes we are going to learn for the next chapters of our subject. And lastly, for the definition of swimming, it is also taught for life-saving purposes. So this is the most important thing for swimming kung bakit natin siya pag-aaralan ngayong SEM. So this subject because for any hazardous situation related to water, especially that our province is surrounded by many bodies of water. So if you are trained and learn in swimming with the techniques and strokes used in swimming, you are able to survive to that situation and more especially you can save the life of other people. Let's proceed to the history of swimming. Human civilizations such as the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Chinese, Indian, and Greek were established beside waters, along rivers and seas, and these developed close ties with the life-giving water. Asian thinkers, poets, lawmakers, general officers, doctors quickly realized the positive effects of swimming and they apply them in military tactics and trainings as well as in education. So swimming for Asian people and Asian civilization is important because they use it in everyday living, for military tactics, for training, and in education. So that's how important the swimming in ancient time. So here are the evidences that swimming is one of the activities that they have in ancient times. So in, in the first figure, we have here breaststroke swimming figures represented in the prehistoric era. So ginagamit na yung breaststroke noon pa, pero hindi pa siya na-acknowledge as breaststroke. But the techniques they use is the same with the breaststroke that we have here. In, during our time. So in the figure 2, we have freestyle swimmers in ancient Egypt. So sa mga sa Egypt, ang ginagamit nila freestyle. So in the third figure, we have representation of swimming Assyrian warriors from 
1,200 BC. So, ginagamit na talaga yung swimming for warriors, for training of their soldiers, for war, and other purposes. So, next, for ancient Greeks, swimming was a measure of culture. Those uneducated who can neither swim nor read and write cannot hold a public position, said Plato. So, syempre, if you are a public servant or a leader, you are like the captain of the ship. Dapat ikaw yung unang marunong lumangoy for you to survive and save the life of other people. In Mesopotamia, we can find swimming and the pictorial or written records here of in almost every nation's culture from the Sumerian to the Assyrian. Swimming was an integral part of combat training of the Assyrians as well as young people in Israel receive obligatory swimming lessons. Herod the Great in 73 BC to 4 AD, king of Judea, made swimming compulsory to all male children. So, napaka-active nung war sa kanila nung mga panahon na yun, nung ancient times. So, they need to have training. So, ginawa nila yung swimming as an instrument or as a training for training purposes for their military tactics. So, here are the other history uh, for swimming. During the, for the Icelandic, Icelandic folklore also reports a number of swimming deeds which shows that both men and women were excellent swimmers. In Japan, swimming had an important role in the training of the samurai. It's one of the noble skills. According to the historical records, the first known swimming competition was held in the isolated island country in 36 BC, organized by Emperor Sugyu. In the remote India, the ancient records of swimming can also be found. One of the first pools used for swimming is located here in Mohenjo-daro, dating back to 2000 BC and measuring 30 to 60 meters. Within the military case, it was mandatory to learn how to swim and fight in water. In China, where body culture flourished under the reign of the Third Dynasty, the Zhu Dynasty, from 11th to 3rd C, historian account swimming across rivers of course here as well swimming was part of the military training in the battle of salamis in 480 bc the persians were heavily defeated by the greeks the persians ships were sunk by the greeks who due to their lack of swimming ability could not escape to the nearby island of salamis and therefore most of them got drowned in the sea the Asian swimming and bathing culture rose to its highest level in Rome. The usefulness of swimming in entertainment and in public life and its role in politics was quickly realized. Romans excelled in bath building too. Swimming for the Romans did not only have health and bath exercising function, but it was considered as indispensable also in military training. From the 3rd century BC, warriors had swim in attire and weaponry in order to improve their physical fitness. So that's how swimming was really have um, very good impact to for the ancient times. So here are the also for the evidences that we have for the ancient times for swimming. For figure number seven, we have seaside batting cabins or cabins thrown by horses here the figure in the figure eight batting women coming from seaside next we have figure four spoon from ancient egypt showing a swimming figure and for figure seven it is the art of swimming represented in images figure number five Medieval representation of a bat from a 15th century manuscript by a famous Flemish painter here. And lastly, we have figure number six, Floating Man, from the book by Bernard in 1685. So in addition to the history of swimming, so we have the origins and the evolution of competitive swimming. As the greatest event in the history of swimming, in 1875, Matthew Webb swam across the English Channel 
between Dover and Calais in 21 hours and 45 minutes. The distance was 34 kilometers but he supposedly swam in zigzag. So he covered 64 kilometers by the end. Because of the 16 degree cold water, he slaughtered his body with grease. According to the records, he covered the whole distance swimming breaststroke. So during his um, swimming attempt for the record by Matthew Webb, he was guided by four men sa isang bangka to give water. Kasi syempre napaka tagal nung swimming ano niya, 21 hours and 45 minutes in time niya. So kailangan niya talagang na ng water. But the amazing thing that he did during that time was he swam in zigzag. So yung record niya ay nagawa niya ng two attempts. Nung first attempt niya, hindi niya natapos because of of storm surge. So, nag-second attempt siya. Doon sa second attempt, so, yun yung naging record niya ng 21 hours and 45 minutes. So, syempre, bata pa lang si Matthew Webb. Natuto na agad siyang lumangoy. And marami na rin siyang naligtas na tao. But then, the reason of his death was also because of swimming. So, nalun siya nung nag-attempt siya ng another long distance. So, dun na siya namatay. And the next thing, the first woman, Gertrude Ederly, undertook the same distance in the English Channel in 1926. So, he surplus Matthew Webb's time to 14 hours and 32 minutes. So, siguro ang ginamit na ni Gertrude dito straight na hindi na zigzag. zigzag. So, para mas mabilis yung kanyang paglangoy. Next. Captain Boyton was also considered to be a great long course swimmer. In 1876, he drew attention to himself when he swam from Linz to Budapest in a specific way, lying on his back with oars in his hands and a sail attached to his feet. He covered the distance in 52 hours. These long course swims have primarily increased the popularity of swimming as a sport. For a long time, swimmers were not motivated by the time or the speed, but by the distance they were able to cover. For a long time, the stories of rivers, lake, are related to coastal peoples, golf, crossing swimming, swims have been reported. So, naging famous yung swimming because uh, swimming competition because of Captain Boyton, wherein yung mga swimmers hindi sila motivated kung gaano sila kabilis when it comes to speed and gano sila kabilis when it comes to time but <clears throat> motivated sila when it comes to the distance so palayuan sila ng record ng paglangoy so when it comes to olympics from the first olympic games in 1896 swimming has been included in the program of the olympics at the first olympic games in athens swimmers competed only in four events we have 100 meters, 500 meters, and 1,200 meters freestyle and event organized for the Greek seamen where everyone could swim in a style as he wanted or as he could. From 1900s backstroke, then from 1904 breaststroke, and finally in 1956 butterfly were also included in the events of the Olympics program. So here, additional part of the history of swimming, we have the organization of competitive swimming. The international governing body, bodies of, for swimming, we have FINA, the Federation International Denotation, was founded in 19 of July 1927 in London in the Manchester Hotel. At the inaugural meeting, the swimming federations of eight countries. We have Belgium, England, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Sweden, and Hungary were present. The current head office of FINA in is in Switzerland, in Laosian. FINA oversees the organization of competitions in five aquatic sports, swimming, diving, synchronized swimming, Synchronized swimming, water polo, open water swimming. So they are, they are the FINA who 
or the international governing bodies were in, they are the one who organized and managed the international competition for swimming. So among the swimming competitions which are organized by FINA, the most important ones are FINA Swimming World Cup, Short Course Swimming World Cup, Junior World Cup, Swimming World Cup, Marathon World Cup. And here in our country, we have the national governing bodies for swimming. They are so-called the Philippine Swimming Incorporated. They are the one, they are the national governing bodies for swimming. They are the one who organize and manage the swimming competitions in our country, the Philippines. So let's proceed to the benefits of swimming. The first one is the physical benefits of swimming. We have improved flexibility and strength, builds up endurance, increases muscular flexibility, balance muscular and heart muscles become stronger. The first physical benefits of swimming when it comes to muscles. Syempre nag active lahat ng muscles natin when, when it comes to swimming. So nagkakaroon ng muscular flexibility and strength. So dahil na move siya, nag adjust na stretch. So nagkakaroon ng flexibility and naging strong yung nagkakaroon ng strength yung ating muscles. And we have builds up endurance. So nagkakaroon ng sustained for prolonged activity. So, na-improve yung ating sustainability ng when it comes to endurance. And also, we have heart muscles become stronger. So, dahil gumagamit tayo ng different breathing techniques when it comes to swimming, yung ating proper breathing techniques underwater, syempre kailangan natin na, na magkaroon ng different breathing techniques to different swimming strokes. So, may, meron tayong different breathing techniques na gagamitin. So, dahil doon, nagkakaroon ng nagiging strong yung heart muscles natin. So, yun yung mga physical benefits ng swimming. Next, we have social benefits of swimming. One, have fun. Next, fellowship with other people. Next, enjoyable even when working hard. And it is safe program. So, dapat, pag magliligo kayo, lagi nyong tatandaan na dapat may kasama kayo, may fellowship kayo with other people pag magkakaroon kayo ng swimming activities. It is not only for social interaction but also for safety na rin kung magkakaroon man ng mga situation na hindi natin na inaasahan. So, makakahingi tayo ng tulong. So, sabi rin dito, pag mas marami daw kayong kasama, magkakaroon ng fun and It is enjoyable pag madami. Mas marami, mas masaya. So, kahit galing kayo sa trabaho, and then, pag naligo kayo, so, nagkakaroon, nagiging, na, nagkakaroon ng enjoying. So, nakawala yung stress. So, yun. And also, sabi dito, it is safe program. So, hindi naman porket um, swimming, delikado na agad. So, meron tayong tinatawag ng water safety program. Pag-aaral natin yan sa next lesson natin. So, dun magkakaroon tayo ng mga safety precautions na kailangan natin tandaan at malaman bago tayo maligo or mag-swimming type, magkaroon tayo ng swimming activities. So, these are the social benefits of swimming. Next, we have psychological benefits of swimming. Helps develop the positive attitude, contribute to a feeling of well-being. Next, teach patients, release stress and tension, and renew energy. When it comes to swimming, pag nagliligo tayo, um, nawawala or tinatanggal natin yung mga negative attitude, negative energy, stress, tension. So, nililinis natin lahat yung ating buong pagkatao. Hindi lang yung, yung sa loob, pati na rin yung sa labas, pati na rin yung nasa loob natin. So, pag, syempre, after maligo, so, feeling nyo kayo new new person. So, parang nalinis na kayo ng buo. So, doon nagkakaroon ng positive attitude. Then, nakawala din yung stress and tension natin. Kasi, enjoyable talaga and may fun talaga when it comes to swimming. Okay, and also, when it comes to renew energy, after mong maligo, ang sarap matulog. So, doon magkakaroon ng renew of energy. And, nagtuturo din ang swimming ng patients kasi... Maraming skills na difficult sa swimming. So, hindi, hindi mo siya matutunan ng isang liguan lang, ng isang araw lang. So, 
you need time, more time, and more patience to learn all the skills that we have in swimming. So, marami pang other benefits ng swimming. Hindi lang yun, napakadami pa niya. Okay, next, let's proceed to swimming attire. So, this is the basic swimming attire that we have that we are going to provide in our swimming, our face-to-face -face swimming, maybe on our final final examination or final performance for boys and this for girls. So, hindi ko muna sasabihin kung anong uri ng attire yan kasi we have our first activity na may kinalaman sa swimming attire in our module. So, there, these are the swimwear examples. So, we have here this one for girls and this is this Sec next figure, this one, the second figure, are the swimmer used in a competition. Another swimmer for girls. And the last one is the swimmer for boys. So, yun yung different swimmer. Hindi ko muna rin sasabihin kung ano ori siya ng swimmer because we have our first activity again in our module in connection with the different swimmer use in swimming. So let us proceed to the swimming accessories, equipment, and facilities. Number one, we have earplug. The earplug inserted in the ear canal to protect you from loud noise, dust, and excessive wind. So highly recommended for all the beginners, more especially yung hindi pa masyadong marunong sa ilalim ng tubig sa ilalim ng swimming pool, sa ilalim ng dagat, sa paglangoy. Next, we have the goggles. Goggles is a safety glass to protect the area surrounding the eyes to prevent particulates, water, or chemicals from striking the eyes. So, it is one of the most, you know, important swimming accessories for safety of, of our eyes under the water kasi hindi, ma, hindi masyadong clear yung sight natin pag nasa ilalim tayo ng tubig. For safety na rin para makaiwas tayo sa mga disgrasya. So, yan yung isa sa pinaka-importante accessory na kailangan natin sa swimming. Next, we have nose clip. This is the nose clip. Hindi yan pang sa ilong. Nose clip is to hold the nose, nose trails close to prevent water from entering or air from escaping. So, pag hindi pa kayo masyadong marunong sa breathing, sa breathing, sa under the water, so, mahalaga na magkaroon muna kayo or gumamit kayo ng nose clip for all the beginners. Next, we have the swim cup. Swim cup is for you to keep hair relatively dry. So, bakit kailangan daw dry ang buhok? So, the swim cap is important for swimming competitions because, sabi dito, it keep, keeps hair relative, relatively dry. So, ba't kailangang tuyo yung buhok? So, pagbasa yung buhok natin, nakakadagdag siya ng pagbigat ng ating katawan. So, para mag maging dry at makatulong sa maayos na paglangoy during sports uh, swimming competition, so, gumagamit sila ng swim cap. Maliwanag. Okay, next. Let's proceed to the next one here. It is what we call the fist gloves. Fist gloves enhance a feeling for water while swimming. So, syempre, mas nakakatulong. Pag-fitted kasi yung meron sa katawan natin, mas nakakatulong siya. As you can see in the picture, masyadong fitted sa kamay natin yung fist gloves. Tapos meron din siyang mga part dun sa kamay na makakatulong para sa paglangoy. Parang ganun sa duck. Yan. Next, we have inflatable armbands. So, this is the inflatable armbands. Nakaka um, isang, isa rin sa recommendation ko yan para sa mga beginners to use this inflatable armbands pag sa swimming lesson natin. Kasi dyan din ako nag-start nung bata pa ako. Dyan, yan din ang ginagamit ko. Kaya 
dyan ako natutong lumangoy. Isa na sa daily ang tumbat dyan. Kung ba't ako natutong lumangoy. Dahil sa inflatable armbands. So, it helps a wear float in the water and learn to swim. So, ayan. Nakakatulong talaga siya sa paglangoy. Next, we have the, the hand paddle. This is the hand paddle. So, the hand paddle. Increases the resistance of the hand experience at as it tries to move through the water. Next, we have the pool noodle. Pool noodle is useful when learning to swim for floating. It is also used for rescue re reaching and for aquatic exercises. Next, we have the swimming machine. It is the, this is the swimming machine. Swimming machine is a resistance swimming apparatus enable the swimmer to swim in place. Next, we have the swim fin. The swim fin provides the lower body with good workout and improve the flexibility of the ankle. So, para kayo naglalangoy na napating. Ay, movement ng shark or ng fish. So, nakatulong din yan para matrain natin yung ating flexibility ng ankle and yung sa lower body workout. Next, we have the pool boy. This is the pool boy. It is an accessory use or use for training or for swimming competition. Nilalagay siya sa between the legs para ma-practice yung yung flattering ng feet ng mga swimmers ng, for competitive competition. And lastly, and another accessory, we have the the float or ring. Here. Float or ring. Used to learn how to swim. So, yan yung isa rin sa most basic and common, you know, accessory use or equipment used in swimming. The last one and the most important one is the swimming pool. So, the standard size of the swimming pool used for competition, we have, it is, it has 8 to 10 lanes. The width is 25 meters. The length is 50 meters. And the deep is 6 feet. So, that is the standard size of swimming pool used in swimming competitions. So, those are the swimming accessories, equipment, and facilities. That is the last topic that we have in our first module. So, that's all for today. Goodbye and thank you, class.